Hey there everybody, this is Ben Zeno of the Bulk Report, and today we are here at Ron Wild. This is Brooke, and this is Cotton Kestrel. Wintertime exploring is oftentimes really hard, especially here in North Carolina, where things just really aren't used to winter. Um, right now, the only animals you can find are really hard to see, like mammals, which are usually nocturnal, or really hard to film, like birds, because they almost never stay still. So we actually went to a local wildlife rehab center called Rare and Wild, and we had the rare chance to interact with American kestrels. So you can check out that footage right now. All right, so Brooke, you think I can hold? You may. All right. Go ahead and pass them off. A copper. There you go. Good job. All right, now you'll notice that we do have them tethered. We have them just on his ankles, and I'm holding the string right here. This uh, doesn't hurt the bird at all. This is just to make sure that if he were to see something and get distracted or freak out, if he flew, he couldn't injure himself. So this is all for the safety of the bird. Now, copper is an American kestrel, and kestrels are both the most populous and the smallest falcons in North America. He's looking at me like I'm going crazy. Hey, buddy. Hey. All right, now, copper, as you can see, is very, very small. And if you just saw him in the sky, you might actually confuse him with a common songbird. The copper is definitely not a songbird. Copper the kestrel is a hunter. Now, kestrels prey mostly on insects, all right? So you can sometimes see them even like football or soccer stadiums around the lights, because the lights will attract moths and other flying insects, and that is what these eat. But they can also prey on things like smaller birds and even mice. So when a kestrel hunts, it's pretty unique. You see he has that, oh, 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 oh. that's why we have the Jessies. Copper. I'm probably going to cut most of that last clip out, but what happened is he did kind of freak out a little bit, and I did not have this wrapped tightly around my hand, so when they fly, they could injure themselves, but luckily he is fine. Now, what I was going to say is that copper here, you can see his tail, is very much like a fan, and when it's folded up like this, it, you can't see it very impressively, but... Oh, we've got some bird droppings, too. Oh, come on, we have to clean that up. But when copper, the kestrel, when he hunts, he'll actually hover over fields, open fields, and he has excellent vision. So falcons can see several hundred times better than a human can. They have millions and millions of photoreceptors in their eyeballs. So they can even see different colors than humans can. So what he'll do is he'll just hover over a field and he'll look down and he also uses his ears and he'll listen for little mice or little birds scurrying down in the grasses. Now when he's ready to attack, he will dive down out of the sky. He'll kind of tuck his wings towards his body and make him very aerodynamic. And he just dives down and grabs them with those talons. Now, he has very small talons for a falcon because he is a very small bird, but they are still very sharp and they are very strong, and that's why we have to wear this leather glove. If I was not wearing this glove, even though copper is small, his talons could literally go down to the bone in my hand. So copper is just a gorgeous bird. He's one of the most unique falcons. It looks like he's a fly. Yeah, you're good. Now, you can easily identify a kestrel at close range because they have these spots on them, and you see they have those navy blue highlights on their head and on their wings, and the rest of them is kind of a tan brown. But he is a gorgeous little falcon, and these are very successful birds. Because they are so small, they don't need to eat quite as much prey or have quite as much roaming room as the other falcons in North America, like hawks or eagles. So you can find these in very urban areas and in rural areas, uh, especially first on power lines. Now these inhabit areas all across North America, up into Canada, and even down in South America. So, copper is definitely an awesome bird, a very cool animal, and if you ever see one in your yard, it is quite a treat to watch them hunt. Alright, thanks buddy. Now, although these amazing predators are extremely widespread as far as raptors are concerned, that does not mean they are impervious to population decline. Insecticides specifically are thought to be a huge issue for these birds not only accumulating in toxic quantities within their organs, but also killing off their main food source. For this reason, their populations in the U.S. have halved in the past 50 years. If you would like to learn more about kestrel conservation and how you can help out, please click the link in the description. This is Ben Zeno of The Wall Report, signing out.